Welcome in to the latest episode of Betting the Pitch Europa League Edition. I'm your host, Real Underscore G Warner, joined by nobody, but it's me. Late night, as always, the Real Underscore G Warner, uh, right before we get a tip off in the last game of the Maui Invitational. Uh, if you're a college basketball fan, please check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash real underscore G Warner. Best spot for all my plays leans right up across all sports. Well, on today's episode, we're going to try to improve our 13 and three year to date uh, best bet record on soccer bets with, with the ultimate best bet. What I do end of show is I combine my best uh, plays from each of the, the countries on the domestic podcast every weekend uh, and then on the Continental, uh, specifically for Europa League, I'm going to do the early window, the 12.45 Eastern time slate, and then the uh, 2 p.m. Central, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time, and pick one of my favorites from both of those windows, and then you can grade me on that, and hopefully we'll be improving uh, to a better football score for the next episode. Um, across all the platforms, I'm at the Real underscore G Warner. Uh, if you want more of this podcast, go to Betting the Pitch and subscribe there on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Uh, on YouTube at the Real Underscore G Warner. Instagram works there, though I'm in between uh, phones right now trying to make sure I get enough memory so I can cut that one-minute ultimate best bet. So if you want to digest this episode in, in one minute instead of 40, uh, make sure you follow at the Real Underscore G Warner on Instagram. So uh, going to get this tweeted out so people know I'm live uh, and then try to get uh, a little bit queued up in the background because I do want to make sure I don't miss the tip of this Maui Invitational matchup, but I don't think this podcast is going to take 40 whole minutes. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to go through each game on the list, each bettable op option opportunity, and uh, try to find some winners because that's the uh, that's the goal here. Um, other than that, if you have any questions or, or want to uh, interact with the podcast, feel free to do so. I do have comments on, um, and we'll see if I can find a way to see them. Um, but with that all said... Uh, it's time to get into this Europa League match day five edition. I don't think it makes sense to, to talk about where teams are in the points races because we still have three match days uh, left to go. Uh, but those episodes are going to come and they're going to come much longer and there's going to be a lot more teams to talk about. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Uh, so in the Europa League, we'll start on Thursday, the 27th, 28th excuse me, of November, uh, Thanksgiving here in the United States, but also a uh, big continental soccer day in Europe. So we'll start with Lazio hosting Ludogorets uh, of Bulgaria. Uh, Lazio currently one and three quarter goal favorite with almost all the juice on Ludogorets. Over under is three, juice all the way to over. So Ludogorets have been a really good under team so far in this competition. Uh, actually had a lead on Athletic Club Bilbao from La Liga in their last match uh, before the international break of Europa League. Um, and uh, it's wild that they could take a lead because they're very unlikely to score goals. Um, at this point, I don't know who's backing them uh, to, to win matches for nearly 10 to 1 odds to win this road match. Uh, and Lazio have been playing very, very well in Serie A, including a backbreaking uh, third goal. They were winning a match 2 0, had a set piece uh, conceded to Bologna, but scored late, killed my under. But they've been playing really, really well. And uh, they're a side that I've been wanting to back. I have backed in this competition on the road at, at uh, Twente and Shede. But at this point, uh, or Anshund, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, some Dutch club uh, from the Eredivisie. And I think at this point, I'm looking to be on Lazio as much as possible. So as a one and three quarter goal favorite, you know, that's not my, my style, especially if you listen to this podcast and have listened to it or, or followed me on any sort of platform. Uh, you know, I, I generally root for the bad team, so I... Certainly try to, to make it so my, my bad teams are not as bad as the uh, as the market thinks they are. Um, but then uh, I, I think for for this, I, I guess, window here uh, and this matchup in the early window, I'll put it, that's probably a better way to put it as I'm clearly distracted trying to set up my uh, some of the best bets portion of the show. Uh, for the nominee, I guess, for this early window as a po potential ultimate best bet uh, recommendation, I'll go with under three. It's all the way juiced to over. We might see three and a quarter before kickoff. Uh, Lazio stay at home, so we'll be at Stadio Olimpico again, which is good for them and, and probably means they play well. Uh, I just don't think Ludogorets have much of a chance to score here, and that's going to make it really hard for Lazio to give you four goals. And especially if he gets to three and a quarter, then a three goal uh, f finish would, would end up being a winner. So uh, that's my interest in, in, in that early first matchup in the early window, Ludogorets under three goals. Move next to Atletico Bilbao, who I just mentioned on their uh, road trip to Ludogorets, where they came from behind, I think scored two goals in a minute in like the 73rd minute and 74th after trailing throughout the match. Um, good step for them. And coming off uh, El Derby Vasco, we'll see if they uh, potentially rotate a little bit, but also coming back from international break into the Derby, 
uh, then playing on Thursday. It's a lot, a lot of time between Sunday and Thursday. So we'll see what comes out of here. The nice part, though, for Athletic Club is they're a two-goal favorite to Elfsborg. All the juice in Elfsborg away from home, over under is three and a quarter, and it's juice slightly more to under. Uh, not a lot to see here. I, I don't think Elfsborg are, are anywhere near this competition, though they did, uh, I think, beat Roma or at least draw them earlier this season. But Roma has been uh, in disastrous run for a long time. So uh, probably not a lot to take out of that one. Uh, I think biggest interest for me is that this is a athletic club opportunity to uh, rotate and maybe we don't see Inyaki Williams and Nico Williams on, on both flanks. Um, I don't know necessarily that elsewhere will be able to defend on the road in Bilbao in, in a really tough place to play like San Mames for 90 minutes. And that's what they're going to have to do. So we'll see how that ends up working out. Uh, I guess I'll put under three and a quarter on my list, but I'm not sure it's going to make it too far uh, into the ultimate best bet portion. But stick around for that. That's coming. End of show. Uh, move next to Azed Alkmaar from the Eredivisie in, in Holland or in the Netherlands. Uh, they are hosting Galatasaray of Turkey. Currently, Azed, a quarter goal underdog at home with more juice on Galatasaray. Over under is three, juice more to the under. Um Azed, you know, they've been okay in this competition. I feel like I was impressed with them early. I've been less impressed since. Uh, Galatasaray on the other side have spent a ton of money on big names you've heard. Uh, Victor Simhan especially, um, who was expecting a, a mostly $100 million or plus move to uh, PSG. That didn't happen, fell through. And uh, he ended up in Turkey on loan because Napoli wanted him out. And uh, he wanted out and didn't get to where he was going. Um, with that said, it's a long-winded way to say I do like the uh, home underdog. Dutch Eredivisie crowds at home are awesome uh, and make a real impact on, on the home team. Um, I'd like them as more of a defensive underdog, uh, though all, all underdogs at home are, are of interest to me. So I'll put that on my list as Ozzed under uh, as a home underdog, getting that quarter of a goal. I don't know that under three is as interesting to me, but I can't blame you if you want to take it because that's a very important push offered there on three. Moving next to Dinamo Kiev hosting, quote unquote hosting, if you're watching on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on YouTube, you can see the air quotes. Uh, but Dinamo Kiev are not playing in, in Kiev. They are uh, outside Ukraine for this entire competition, and they are hosting in that sort of way uh, Victoria Plzen uh, from the Czech Republic, so or che Czechia as it's cur currently called. Over under is two and a half. This one juiced all the way to under. Uh, wouldn't be shocked if the number continues to fall. I just don't think Dinamo Kiev are anywhere near uh, capable or, or good enough for this competition, uh, at least not for the respect they get in said competition. Uh, they're not playing at home. They have no home games. They're forever vagabonds. Uh, gypsies would have, uh, probably not the right thing to say, but um, ultimately Victoria Plzen, they are not strong, but they've uh, scored a bunch of goals in this competition. They have got, got a big win in their last match before the international break, I think against Real Sociedad at home. Um, I like their defense. I think it's a low scoring matchup and uh, at the current pick them with all the juice on Dino Akiv, uh, we might see this climb to quarter goal underdog. And that's where I'll be looking at Fort Victoria Plzen. Uh, they somehow won their last match against Real Sociedad, which looked like a dead under even with, a uh, youth team center back playing in their three man back line. I'm very curious to see what that, that back line looks like for Victoria present in this matchup. But uh, even then, I think that was a pretty good performance. And uh, I think there's a lot of value going against Dino Kiev in their fake home. Uh, so Victoria Plazen, I'll put them on the list uh, as the, uh, let's see, as the, I guess, uh, I mean, I, I don't know that I want to put them on, on as a pick them just yet. So I'll go under two and a half as my biggest interest, but um, I am certainly waiting. Well, you know, honestly, I think I, I'm willing to play home pick -ems, And certainly that would, that would apply to neutrals. Um, and this Dinamo Kiev team is playing in their, their fake home, but I, I don't consider it that way. So I'll put that uh, pick them with plus money, plus odds on, on the list. And I'll, I'll go under two and a half in that matchup as well. Moving next to Anderlecht of Belgium, hosting football club Porto uh, de, of Portugal. Uh, currently Anderlecht, a quarter goal underdog at home with more juice on Porto away from home. Totals two and a half juice all the way to over. Uh, Porto used to be a defensive side. Uh, they've been scoring a ton of goals and conceding a lot more importantly in this competition. Uh, that's scary, especially going away from home as a favorite. Uh, for that reason, amongst others, I do like Anderlecht in that quarter of a goal. They're a pretty talented uh, Belgian side that certainly are capable and can definitely win this matchup. Um, I like that quarter of a goal at home, home underdog. And I don't really have much of a feel for the total. Uh, moving next to Besiktas hosting Maccabi Tel Aviv, uh, the Turkey side from Galatasaray, or excuse me, from Istanbul. Sorry, I already mentioned Galatasaray. They're hosting Maccabi Tel Aviv, who are um another one of those vagabonds not able to play home matches this year in israel and they're just not very strong uh, i think they're 
in for a rude awakening heading to one of the bigger cathedrals in Istanbul, uh, soccer cathedrals, that is. Uh, totals two and three quarters, juiced all the way to over. I like it a little bit more if it hit three. Uh, I just don't think I want any business dealing with Maccabi Tel Aviv at this point in the Europa League. Moving next to Rigas Football Escola, I believe from uh, Latvia, I want to say. Uh, they're hosting Pauk of Thessaloniki in Greece. Uh, currently, Riga Football Escola are RFS. Uh, they are three quarter goal underdog at home with a little bit more juice over. There's two and three quarters, juice pretty heavily to under. Um, I don't see a lot of goals in this matchup. That's my biggest interest there. Uh, it's, I guess, in a way, back in home underdogs defense if you play under the total. Um, so under two and three quarters, my interest in that one. And we'll go to the last matchup in the early slate, slate before you get my uh, nominee for the ultimate best bet 13 and three year to date. Uh, and that is Karabag hosting Lyon. Currently, Karabag a half a goal underdog in Azerbaijan. With all the juice, over-unders three, just about the same, a little bit more to under, just one penny. Uh, splits the difference there. Um, Lyon are growing into a good team. Uh, I think they should be able to win this matchup. Clearly, their favorite away from home. Uh, only real interest for me, I think, is to Karabag, uh, that home underdog, getting a half of a goal. I just don't feel great about them competing on the scoreboard. Uh, and if I don't like an under and I don't like a home underdog, that's probably a good sign for me to, to stay away from that matchup. So for the early window of the Europa League on this match day five, I need to make a selection or I need to make a nomination for the ultimate best bet portion of the show. And uh, for that one, I'm going to go as I put the comments on to show they're open. If you uh, throw something in here, I'll try to reply if I see it. Um, but I'm going to go with from that early window. Man, I think Anderlecht getting a quarter of a goal is my biggest interest there. So I'll put that on the list. Anderlecht, uh, quarter goal underdog at home against Porto. Uh, we'll move to the early, to the late slate. Uh, and so it's clearly not that late as it's, I think, just going to settle in right before we're even considering trying to figure out what channel the Giants and the Cowboys are in NFL football. Uh, a little bit different than the current football we're talking about on the Betting Pitch podcast. Uh, Europa League edition. Uh, we'll start with Ferenc Varos from uh, Budapest in Hungary or Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Hungary. They're hosting Malmo of Sweden, I think. Uh, Ferenc Varos, a half a goal favorite at home with all the juice over, unders two and a half, juice more to the over. Uh, I'm surprised to see Ferenc Varos favored. They've been playing well in this competition. They're a good defensive side. They're going to sit in and, def and defend even at home against a, a side they're favored to. Uh, so for that reason, I think this is a conservative, low-scoring matchup. I like Malmo getting that half of a goal, uh, and I also like the under two and a half as my biggest interest in that matchup. Moving next to FCSB of Bucharest, I believe, in Romania. They're hosting Olympiakos of Piraeus in Greece. Currently, FCSB, a quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice on Olympiakos away from home. Totals two and a half in this one, juiced all the way to under. Um, I don't see a lot of goals. Olympiakos have been... I mean, somehow a really aggressive attacking manager has made them a really decent uh, European comp competitor. And here they are favored away from home yet again. Um, I don't know that I want to necessarily step in the way of Olympiacos. Their, uh, their owner also owns Nottingham Forest and the splash money in both of these clubs. Got a lot of big names on Olympiacos roster and a Greek Super League that doesn't really compare to a lot of leagues out there, uh, but is stronger than uh, the Romanian League. Uh, and I think we... Uh, we'll see Olympiacos uh, looking like a favorite, but we'll see if they can actually punch the goals across the line. Uh, I think I'll, I'll still lean to the, the home underdog in uh, Bucharest, a quarter of a goal underdog at home. Looks like it might climb to a half of a goal before kickoff as well. Uh, but biggest interest, I think, is under two and a half in this one. Uh, moving next to Nice, they're hosting Rangers of Scotland and of Glasgow specifically. Currently, Nice, a half a goal favorite, with a little bit more juice over under is two and three quarters. She's all the way to under. Uh, not a lot of goals expected in this matchup, uh, which is basically every Nice match that goes out there. They spent a ton of money, but they have a defensive manager brought him in in the offseason. It's been a slow start to his campaign. Uh, but Rangers, they travel well. They have a ton of crowd or fans in the crowd, supporters uh, coming in from Scotland to the Colt to Zul. Uh, but at this point, I don't think I want to back Rangers at this point. I, I don't really trust Nice, though, to score. Uh, so I think my biggest interest in the Rangers-Nice matchup is under two and three quarters. Move back to Michelin, hosting Eintracht Frankfurt from the German financial capital. Michelin in Denmark, I believe. Totals uh, two and three quarters. This one juiced pretty heavily to over. But the side, Michelin, are a half a goal underdog at home with all the juice. Uh, maybe this falls to a quarter of a goal. But I respect Eintracht Frankfurt money to come in. They've been playing very well. Uh, they're in the top 
three uh, of the German Bundesliga entering uh, the last match day. So uh, a lot of good plays come from them. They've got a lot of talent and have been scoring a ton of goals. And I don't know really I want to get in the way of that with either a Michelin side or an under two and three quarters. Uh, maybe at three, I'll have a little more interest, but probably still want to stay away because Eintracht Frankfurt's defense is not exactly impregnable, as uh, Mike Tyson once said about himself. Um, Sporting Braga then hosts Hoffenheim as the uh, Southwest Germans will head to uh, the uh, Portuguese, I guess not capital, but they'll, they'll head to Portugal. Uh, Braga, a half a goal favorite at home, all the juice on Hoffenheim with their new manager, fresh off of, I guess, not a boat because uh, Austria and Germany are landlocked next to each other, but um, straight out of Sturm Graz. Uh, over under is three, just more to the over. Uh, and Hoffenheim, I mean, they played aggressively, somehow tied Leipzig, fell behind three times, equalized all the three, and then scored a late goal to somehow get a win in one of the most miraculous debuts for a German Bundesliga ma manager. It had to be. Um, I guess I like their side because they can score goals. I don't think I want much to do with unders. Uh, I don't really think I was that impressed by the Sumgras manager, but I guess they needed someone when Pellegrino Matarazzo, the American, had to be shown the door. Uh, that didn't seem like it was going to hold all season, though he did somehow get them into the Europa League competition, which is amazing. Uh, I think Hoffenheim getting the half of goals is my biggest interest just because they can score, but I still have some big concerns about their defense, especially seeding three to Leipzig. Uh, Real Sociedad then hosts Ajax, currently Sociedad, a half a goal favorite at home with more juice than Ajax away from home. Total is two and a half, uh, and just juice more to the under. Ajax, to me, I think there's still some value betting them, uh, maybe more into the under than their side. Uh, Real Sociedad coming off the uh, Derby Vasco, so they're going to certainly be gassed and, and emotional, especially after a trip to uh, Bilbao for it. Ajax coming in, big name, certainly will draw a big crowd, uh, but that's never really a problem for Aurora Reala. They are simply getting uh, goals is, is the biggest issue for them. Uh, I think the biggest interest for me in this one still is Ajax. Uh, I do like the side, uh, just really playing against the Sociedad offense that we're forced to win this match. A uh, result will not do to cover the spread. Uh, but I lean under two and a half is my biggest interest in that matchup. We'll move next to Tottenham hosting Roma. Uh, Tottenham, who had an incredible 4-0 victory uh, again on the road at Man City uh, this, this past weekend in the English Premier League. Wow. Uh, I don't think anyone saw that coming, though I'm still kicking myself for not playing. One and a quarter goal underdog Tottenham in that matchup. Roma on the other side uh, lost a, a low-scoring match on the road at Napoli. Um, was very expected. I played under two and a quarter in that matchup, and I don't really see much scoring from them at all this season. Uh, I also don't think a lesser city Premier League title winning manager from 10 years ago is going to make too much of a difference. Uh, good luck, Claudio Ranieri. I hope something changes for Roma, but I don't really know that they can score with Tottenham, and I don't want to play much total here. Uh, Roma are an under team, Tottenham are an over team, and uh, since they're pointing in different directions, I will skip. Moving next to Manchester United, they're hosting Bodo Glimt. Currently, Manchester United, a two-goal favorite at home. All the juice on Bodo Glimt away from home. Totals three and a quarter in this matchup, which is pretty heavily to over. Uh, Manchester United brought in Ruben Almarim from, from uh, Sporting Club de Portugal uh, in Lisboa. Uh, we'll see. The jury's certainly still out on him as this is his second match in charge. Uh, but Bodo Glimt are going to come in. They're going to try to score goals. We'll see how that works. But I think ultimately they'll be forced and pressed and pushed back into their own end, looking to defend. And that's going to be a big question is can Manchester United find goals as they're now playing three center backs, which is uh, the Almarim way. However, it's going to take a, an attacker off the pitch for them. And we'll see how they try to find goals with a big favorite with uh, three at the back, unless he changes formation in just a second matchup. Can't imagine he's doing that. Probably going to play how he will play in the Premier League and try to get that. Uh, set in. Um, so leans about a glimpse getting two goals of insurance. Uh, it's a massive number, uh, even though it's pretty ju juiced at the moment. And as I do in every Manchester United match, I lean under under three and a quarter in this one. Uh, FC Twente on Shade then host uh, Union Saint Delois. Currently, Twente, a quarter goal underdog, or excuse me, quarter goal favorite at home to, to Union Saint Delois. Over under is two and a half, juiced all the way to over. Um, Twente have not been impressive to me, so I'm looking to be on USG. Uh, I think I like the quarter of a goal more than I like an under here. Uh, Twente will certainly try to defend and try to keep this low scoring, but Lazio were also a quarter goal underdog. Somehow close there 
uh, just a couple months ago. So uh, some big moves there. Uh, Union Central uh, not as strong as they have been in the past few seasons, but I believe in their system. I believe in their formula, and I don't believe in FZ20. Uh, last but not least, in this late window uh, before I get to the ultimate best bet and then try to get some plugs out there too, which uh, let's see if I can make sure I find and have those things ready to go. Uh, of course, I do not, but we'll see and try to get them there. Uh, but we'll go to Slavia Pra. They're hosting Fenerbahce. Currently, Slavia Pra, a quarter goal favorite at home in Prague's cap uh, the capital of Czechia. They're hosting Fenerbahce from Turkey in Istanbul. Total is two and a quarter, just all the way to over, um, which is saying something because Fenerbahce, I mean, managed by Jose Mourinho, will certainly be a defensive setup uh, as always. Um, under the special one, uh, Slavia Prague on the other side, they're the same sort of way. Uh, they defend, they're a good defense. They do find goals and I feel like they're competitive and this is a good competition for them. Um, uh, but this is tough as a favorite. They're not a favorite very often. Uh, I thought they played really well on the road at Eintracht Frankfurt and at Toledo Club before that. Um, but I think this is a kind of a weird situation. I mean, clearly the market likes them, making them a favorite to a big Turkish giant with uh, Jose Mourinho managing. Uh, but I lean to Fenerbahce getting that quarter of a goal. And I also lean to under two and a quarter as I think Slavia Pra are just hard to see them as a, a home favorite. It's hard to see them with a lot of responsibility to score goals. And uh, I think that all kind of points in that same direction, which to me says, uh, check out the, uh, the under uh, two and a quarter and also the uh, road underdog. Before I get to the ultimate best bet, uh, I'd plan to try to get some uh, shout outs to uh, recent Patreon subscribers. And uh, of course, to all of you that have subscribed on YouTube, plus the many followers that I have found and I have seen. Uh, if you feel like you haven't gotten shouted out, please uh, feel free to, to holla and let me know. Uh, certainly want to make sure I'm doing that the right way and trying to get all of you uh, your you're due. Uh, it's been a, a, a good run. I mean, podcast is growing every day, more and more listeners, watchers, all those sort of things. And I certainly appreciate that. Uh, I think at this point, uh, I guess maybe I save it in my drafts. Um, uh, certainly want to shout out some, some recent. So of course, 13 and three are last 16 ultimate best bets. Uh, actually all of them so far the season has been a great, great run. Uh, going to try to keep that going as long as humanly possible. Um, want to make sure uh, I mentioned, so new Patreon subscribers or, uh, those of you that have re-upped again, Brett Mangigian, Joe Dollar, Joe Susek, Jeff Chapman. Thanks so much. And then YouTube, of course, uh, new subscribers, Honey Freeman, John McLemore, Waiter Enterprises, nice name, uh, Mustafa Shukri, Nick Restrepo, JC Truth. Uh, the support's huge and, uh, I'm still trying to come up with a way to support or at least shout out the rest of you if you want to, of course, if you want to stay uh, quiet or, or not mentioned, that's that's certainly cool too. Uh, just tell me what works best for you and I'll try to make that happen. Um, but I think it's probably time for me to get into the ultimate best bet. Stop stalling, Griffin, just get going. Um, and uh, I guess before I, I do that, so let, let's get some plugs out there. If you're not subscribed, Betting the Pitch and Apple Podcast on Spotify, uh, at the real underscore G Warner on YouTube, at the real underscore G Warner on Instagram. Um, still on my mom's phone for this uh, reel. So there will be a reel back for the Europa League on Thursday and expect one for the NFL coming out on this Sunday, which speaking of mentions the betting the pitch NFL edition podcast with a underscore schnicker. We go through the NFL lines every Tuesday night, give you an idea of where they're moving, but through the, all the standalone games, we usually do each standalone game and, and get to six, but we went through a million on this podcast. So a lot of bang for your buck in the terms of time invested. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, of course, still doing pregame.com podcasts on college football with Big East Ben. We put out the college football one today on Wednesday, November 27th. We're still figuring out the uh, next recording of the Need for Seeds college basketball podcast that'll be coming out. And uh, let's just say things have been hot for me on that basketball uh, gridiron or hard court or floor, and certainly going to try to keep that going as long as possible. Um, before I get to the ultimate best bet, I still, I guess I need to make a selection of what my favorite will be for this episode, uh, uh, at least for the late window. And I think I'm going to go with that Ajax uh, under two and a half goals on the road at Real Sociedad. So that gets us ready for the ultimate best bet. I'm just going just to hold it. You're probably going to have to look at the camera. So sorry if you want to see my face really just gazing into your eyes as I'm recording this, but uh, it's time to get going. So let's do it. 
Hey, this is Real Underscore G Warner on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and on YouTube. This is the late night with the Real Underscore G Warner Ultimate Best Bet. We're 13 and 3 year to date, 81%. Going to try to keep that run going as long as possible. Uh, I'm giving you two best bets one from the early window in Europa League, one from the late. And I pick one, my favorite, to be the ultimate best bet in this episode. Uh, from the early window, I like Underlect, a quarter goal underdog at home to FC Porto. And in the late window, I like Ajax, under two and a half goals uh, on the road at Real Sociedad. Uh, if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com slash so real underscore G Warner. But my ultimate best bet in this episode, 13 and three year to date. I'm going Ajax under two and a half goals uh, combined with Real Sociedad, I guess. But I think this is a close matchup. Ajax are going to score less goals than expected. I think Real Sociedad can control the ball, but they always struggle to put the ball in the net. So play under two and a half is the ultimate best bet. 13 and three year to date, trying to get to 14 and three before we sign off and get to the next weekend episode this coming weekend. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you all for tuning in. I will, uh, of course, be live again uh, probably Friday at some point going over the domestic cards across all of uh, the uh, top five European soccer leagues. And then, of course, stay tuned for more college basketball and I will sleep, I guess, in 2025.